Good morning and welcome to our last service at Europe Conference 2022. It's gone so fast. What a conference we've had. It's been really wonderful, over expectations, I would say. And I hope that you at home has also been able to take part of this conference and what God has done. It's been like a really wonderful smorgasbord, full of food and meetings with God, wonderful speakers, and many words from God that we have received, especially from Tim Ross, to keep building. And that is something we will truly take with us into the fall. I also want to say that this conference is so much about meetings between people. I, I came home very late last night, so I'm kind of dizzy today. But because we are talking so much with so many wonderful people, with people that have come here from other places to share this conference with us, and that has been really, really beautiful. Also, there have been many that have been following us online. That is such a great opportunity for people who sit at home and have not been able to get here. Maybe they are somewhere else in the world. And so wonderful that you have been with us. And please continue to be active in the chat. We have a chat pastor available at all times on the YouTube stream. So please write in the chat if there is anything you want to say, where you are from, if you have prayer requests. You can also email prayer requests at bon at leaveitso.se. And so please do that. We will pray for all the requests that have been sent to us. There's a team praying and we pray on the, on the platform as well. We pray for every individual request. And so if you want us to stand with you in prayer, then we will do so. Today we have our last service. It's not over yet. Pastor Janne Blom will be preaching to us. Janne has stepped into the first pastor role in a great way. And he is the host of the conference now. This is his meeting. And he will sort of summarize what God has been speaking to us during this conference. So I think it will be a really beautiful finish to the conference where we get to hear in what way Janne has experienced God speaking to our church during the conference. So I look forward to that very much. And of course, life doesn't end after the conference, but it continues. So we would like to remind you of some things happening in the future here at World of Life. We have more conferences. In November we have Youth Conference, for those of you who are young, so you are very welcome to come here. 2nd to 6th of November. We also have a leaders conference called LEAD in the spring. We had that before Corona and we have it now again. It's an open leadership conference for those of you who are leaders in the church or wish to be leaders and want to grow as leaders. So that will be in March and there will, be more, there will be more information coming up soon. There are a whole bunch of pastors and leaders from many different denominations and churches coming there to grow and develop in our leadership abilities and to talk to each other. Right now we'll be going before the presence of God. So don't sit down too deep in your sofas and let us worship the Lord together. So Father, we lay this service into your hands this morning. We bless all the people that are here and are following it online. God bless you. Welcome so much to Word of Life Church and both our normal Sunday service and the finish of the Europe Conference. Has it been a great week? Wonderful. Let us stand up together. Please turn to someone that you have not yet said hello to. Give them a fist bump or a high five or shake hands or whatever you wish to do. Maybe you are here for the very first time at the Europe Conference and you have come here to the final day of the celebration where God wants to meet us 
and be enthroned in our worship. So let us lift our hands now and thank the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Lord, we praise you for one more Sunday that we can connect to your people gathering over this whole planet to raise up the name of Jesus and enjoy your wonderful presence. Thank you for visiting us, but when you come close to us, we come close to you. Come and do what you wish to do, Lord. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is a special Sunday. We also have a pastor ordination. Let us now praise God with all our hearts. We thank you, Jesus, that we can give you our worship this morning, that we can lift our eyes to you. And we thank you so much for this week. Today we want to give you all our praise, our honor, our worship. We thank you, Jesus.
Tillsammans så jag upphöjer det. Vi upphöjer dig. Vi upphöjer dig. Vi upphöjer dig. Du vår Gud. Det är hela kyrkolokalen idag bara att slyfta våra händer och sjunga igen. Ja. Let us lift our hands and sing all over the church. Let us sing this one more time together. Let us be totally aware that this is an act of worship to sing out these simple words. We lift you on high. We as the people of God, as a church of God before his throne, we lift up the name of Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords.
har låtit flöda. Let us stop here for a moment before his face. Let us listen to him, to Jesus. Let it flow from your hearts.
Hallelujah. 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 Dear friends, the theme of this conference, Faith for the Impossible. Now, we will apply this in practice and pray for lots of people who need God to act in their lives. Are you okay with lifting up your hearts and hands and pray together with all that you have? Let us do that. Father, we thank you that we can come to you, Lord, you who are good, who are our Father in heaven, who love us so very much. We come to you now with boldness. We come before you with certainty in our hearts about who you are, Lord. You sit on the throne, hallelujah. You reign today. So we thank you that we can come to you today and lift up the name of Jesus above all of these people. We speak out your name, Jesus, and in your name is all the power. You have all the power in heaven and on earth. So we pray out your name over all these situations, these circumstances, these people. We pray to you, Lord, that you will act in these people's lives. Holy Spirit, move in the hospitals, move in the rooms where people lie, li are lying down, and heal, and cure, and ri raise up, Lord. We pray for this, Lord Jesus. We pray also for restored relationships and marriages. We thank you that you come and touch all of these people in your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you that all things are possible in you, that you can do anything. Hallelujah. Thank you that when you went up on the cross, you did that to save us totally, to restore us totally. And we thank you that this is true for all people. We pray for all of these prayer requests, that they will be turned into thanksgivings in your wonderful name. Hallelujah. And all the people said, Amen. My name is Simon Alston. I'm one of the pastors here in the church. We're having some announcements now. And my name is Pauline Nordin. Sorry. That's okay. What an amazing conference we've had. Truly. Please sit down for about 10 seconds. We are reaching towards the end of the conference. A little bit left, almost there. Out in our bookshop, we have lots of books. We have Bibles, we have teaching material. So please take a look out, out there. And today we have an offer that you get four books at the price of three. We also have our YouTube channel where we have sent all our services during the conference. So if you want to listen to a message again, or you missed one, then please go there and you'll find them all. I want to lift up one book on the theme of Pastor Joachim's sermon last night. It's called How to Hear God by Pete Gregg. And if you want to stay updated on all the books that we publish in our publishing company, then you can do so if you go to our social media websites. One thing that I have appreciated very much about this conference is fellowship. Hasn't it been great to meet so many people? I am so happy that the borders between Sweden and the blessed land of Norway, the promised land. It's been so great to meet you all. But all of you, please be ready to give your last. Take this opportunity to eat together after the service. We have our food trucks and tacos and other things. Now one more thing, at 2 p.m. we will start to tear down, no amen to that please, 
but keep building. Keep building. That is what I want to do, but at 2 p.m. anyway, please join us in tearing down for a moment, temporary pausing to the building. So we will tear down this conference area and restore this building and the area around to its normal state. So if you can help out for an hour or two, we would be very blessed. So at 2 p.m., please come help us. We will start at the entrance. So if you don't know what to do, come to the entrance and we'll help each other to sort out the different tasks. Perfect, let's do that together. Thank you. Equipped and ready is the theme for next year's Europe conference that we right now want to welcome you to. It is our 40th conference of this kind. Now I need to ask, I need to ask, is there anyone in here who has been to all 39 conferences that we have done until now? I see hands. Can we give it a hand of applause to all these faith heroes. This is so difficult for me because I have been to every single one except the first one and I can never repair that. I will always be the one who missed the very first conference. But I am so happy that I can come next year and we'll have a wonderful conference above the normal. Today You'll get to listen to Word of Life's main pastor, Janne Blum. And I would like to be personal with you for a moment, because this church is full of people who love you, but I love you even more. I love you the most. Janne. Possibly Sanne loves you a little bit more, but I'm in second place, at least. I want to express my gratitude and love to you, Janne. In a month or two, we've worked together for 25 years. We've stood by each other's sides and it's been such a blessing and a joy for me. About a year ago, both you and I stood before change and many question marks. That is always the case when God changes our directions. And we can stand here today and see how much blessing has been released through this change. And it's so beautiful to keep standing together in our work, but in a different way. And I respect you deeply, and I love you deeply, and I look forward to running into the future with you. Let us give a hand of applause to Pastor Janne Blum. Amen. We will take up today's offering. Today is the last Sunday in the month, and many of us give our tithes this Sunday. And I would like to say something about tithing. I think that is an important thing to keep talking about. Some people say tithing, that's Old Testament stuff. But that doesn't mean it has ceased to exist. Old Testament said, do not kill. That hasn't stopped being true because Jesus came. Old Testament said, the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. And I think we're all happy that is still true. The Old Testament law no longer leads to salvation and righteousness. But listen to this. What was good in the Old Testament is still good and what was bad in the Old Testament is still bad. 
And tithing is one of these things that were good and is good. And have you thought about tithing? God asks us for 10% of our income. You remember Bror Spets, pastor in Södermalms kyrkan? He asked, should you give tithe of before or after taxes? And the pastor looked at this person who asked, and he said, depends if you want blessing on the before tax or the after tax. So why 10%? All the numbers in the Bible, they mean something. Seven is the, the number of perfection. Six is often the number of humanity. Twelve stands for Israel and authority, rule. But what about ten? Ten in the Bible often stands for for trials. Not negative like temptation, but a test trials. I think about the ten the ten plagues or ten trials in a way in Egypt. God tried the heart of Pharaoh ten times. He also tried the people of Israel and desert ten times. How many commandments were we given at first? Ten commandments that tr tries our character and hearts. The New Testament talks about ten virgins, of which five were not ready and five were ready. They were tried. And so a tithing is in a way a test of our own devotion to God. How far are we ready to go in letting our Lord be our Lord? When we read Malachi chapter 3 that talks about tithing, it says in verse 10, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. So God tests us, but we also test God by our tithing. That is the only time in the Bible that God says something like this. About tithing, test me. Test and you will find out. Because I will live up to my part of the deal. He says, test me if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. He says, I will rebuke the devourer. The devourer in Swedish is like animals that eat up the harvest eat up the food that is being stored and so God prevents that from happening and he continues so they will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your, the vine in, your, in the field shall not fail to bear says the Lord of hosts then all nations will be called you blessed for you will be a land of delights says the Lord of Hosts. God calls that people a land of delights. All nations will call you blessed. Tithing is a part of releasing this blessing over our lives. So keep, give, tithes. You might say, I don't have very much money. But you don't need to give very much then. That is so clever about this. If you have much, you give much. If you have little, you give little. That's how tithing works. Keep trying. Let God keep trying you, testing you, and test God to see if the blessing does not come. If you come from a different church, we do not want your tithing. That tithing should go to your own church. But we would love to accept any gifts. Please pray to God right now about what you should give today as a gift of gratitude. Let us pray. Father, we thank you 
very much for the covenant you made with us. You could have said that we should give you all that we own. You have all the right to do so, but you chose not to. Thank you that through tithing, a sign of the covenant, we are a blessed nation, a land of delights, as you have said. I pray, Lord, for your blessing over every person in this church, over their private finances. But the windows of heaven will be open over them, and your blessing will pour down. I pray they will grow and overcome even more. Let food never lack in the storehouse. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to give more today than you have with you in cash or on your bank account, you can give a promise of a future gift. If you raise your hand, a paper will be given to you by our hosts. We can write down what you will give at a future date. You can also give at a normal way if you have a Swedish phone number and bank, which is Swish. And same with VIPs if you are Norwegian. And instructions are on the screen. Thank you very much for giving, no matter how much. God bless you. We will do something very fun this morning. We will ordain a new pastor who will work in our family network. We have a policy that says that all pastors who work here and in our family network will be ordained at the Europe conferences. We have done this at three earlier conferences and of course we have paused this during our digital conferences. It is Johannes Sundin who will be ordained as pastor and who will work together with Thomas Nordberg and the pastoral team in Svedjaholms Kyrkan in Önsköldsvik. So we look forward to this very much. So, dear Johannes, please come up, and those of us, you who will participate as well. Let us give Johannes a hand of applause. So, Johannes, you are a son of the house. Johannes has grown up here in this church and served here for in many different areas. Those of you who do not know Johannes, before he took the name Sundin, he had the name Karlsson. 
and that reminds us of a certain Urban Carlson. So this is his son. I have seen you, minister, serve in this house in different ways. You've worked with youth, you've worked with our publishing company, and four years ago you felt the calling, and you as a calling, you as a family felt the calling to go to Anschelsvik and have served there in the pastoral, pastoral teams. And you are still working with our theological magazine, Theology and Leadership. I have seen the qualities in your heart, your love of people, your love to God's work, and your love to the church and to theology. You have studied here and in that way filled the criteria that we have for pastor ordination when it comes to theological studies. You are a good theologian and ecumenic. You move in all Christian circles and you talk to people all over and it is, it is your great heart for people that is behind this. So we will ordain you now for ministry. This is a great moment. I said this before the service. There is no turning back now. The rest of your life will be different now. What is so wonderful about the intercession you will now receive and the ritual that we will follow is that it will equip you. Pastor Joachim and I have said many times when we have sat in different conversations about the future of the church that we are leaning towards the grace. There is grace for you, Johannes, in the ministry that you will enter into. Whatever your ministry or life will look like, and you must be ready as a pastor that it will be ups and downs. But the Lord is always with you in a wonderful way. And we believe God's hand will rest on you. God's mantle will cover you. And God's grace will embrace you in a beautiful way. And your beautiful family as well. So let us start with reading of a few texts. I'm reading from John 17. I pray that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be, be one, even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them, even as you loved me. Acts 20, verse 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. And I am reading from 1 Peter, chapter 5. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Amen. Johannes Sundin, do you, in the name of God, take on the mission to be a pastor and practice it so that God is honored, the church built up, and God's will made real in the world? Yes. 
Do you, Johannes, stand firm in the faith of the Church, pure and clear, declare the Word of God as it is given to us in the Holy Scriptures, and correctly keep the teaching and life of the Church? Yes. Do you, Johannes, want to live so among people that you are a witness of the love of God and the secrets of redemption? Yes. Then you, Johannes, will confess the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed says the same thing as the Apostolic Creed, but is it goes a little bit deeper and is more detailed. So, Johannes, you will confess the Nicene Creed and the teaching of the Church. Do you, Johannes, believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible? I believe. And do you believe, Johannes, in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of lights, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of the one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe. Do you, Johannes, believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets? and in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I believe. Do you confess, Johannes, one baptism for the remission of sins and look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come? I believe. Amen. Let us pray for you, Johannes, lay our hands on you, and I'll ask the Church to stand up. So, Johannes, on the foundation of your faith and your confession, and what God has led and called you to, and what we have experienced, we shall with joy lay our hands on you. And we pray for you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for Johannes together. Lord, we thank you for this young man. We thank you for Johannes Sundin. We praise you because just as you have called him and drawn his heart to you, what you have put in his heart, we thank you for the ministry that he has, will enter into. We thank you for a mantle of grace, an armor of faith, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling him with all that he needs for the ministry of his life, his walk with you as a shepherd, as a shepherd for the flock. We praise you for this and praise you for this in the name of Jesus. We pray for Johannes. We thank you that he has said yes to the calling and this task. You lay down your grace for this ministry and strength and gifts that are already in him, you add further gifts of the Spirit to him and further equipment. We pray that this will thrive and bloom into a spiritual strength and spiritual discernment, ability to 
communicates spiritual food and care and love. We bless Johannes and his whole family. We pray that your grace will rest over him and his family in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that Johannes is a man of the Word. And there will be a new dimension of entering into the ministry of the Word. So we pray for a new anointing of wisdom, of knowledge, of proclamation, of sharing your Word. We pray that he will not only understand Scripture, but also be receive new depths in applying the Scriptures in the meeting with people and in the building of the Church. Lay this anointing in a new way over Johannes, who is a builder of your Kingdom, a builder of your Church, a builder and developer of disciples, applying the depth of the Scriptures in a spirit of wisdom and knowledge that comes upon this man. Sometimes we will be surprised when we take part of this, of how you share with you, of how you share the word through this man. We thank you that not only we are laying our hands on this man, but you, Lord, are laying your hands over this man's life and what you have called him to. He has responded to your calling over his life. And I thank you, Father, that he will serve you with great boldness. Thank you for the anointing that is over him, that is over him to minister to people and help people. Thank you, Lord, for the joy in ministry, that it is a joy and a privilege to serve you, Lord. Welcome, Johannes. We bless him in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you also for a boldness over Johannes. A boldness to be himself and not try to change things that should not be changed. Let him be bold to be who he is. Thank you for all the gifts you have given him. Gifts to see people. Gifts to know people. Gifts to care. To be merciful. Father, I pray that this will be communicated and be a blessing to people. Let him work in grace and love. Father, I also embrace his whole family, all his children. Thank you for your goodness over them. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are you well? We will also let his wife Magdalena with their children come up here, if that's okay. They have three wonderful but very lively children. So let us give the family Sundin, Belsa Magdalena, a hand of applause and the cheer of the people. Amen. Thank you all very much and please sit down. This is a big day for the whole family Sundin, of course, but also for all the near and dear and for us as a church who has been able to follow Johannes during his whole childhood here at Word of Life. What a wonderful conference that we have had. What wonderful days. It's been like a volcanic eruption, I feel like. I felt such joy in my heart the whole time. And as I've said 
at some point. There was some trembling before this conference. For one thing, to be the host for the first time for this big conference, I was trembling in my heart and felt small and I had to step in with great humility to this conference. But it's been so wonderful when the Holy Spirit comes in the way that He has and flowed through this conference, blessed us and spoken to us. So I will try to summarize the conference. The words that I feel like God has spoken to us during these days, the way that God has worked, and what we need to take with us home from this conference. Because a conference not only a mountaintop that we climb up to of temporary blessing, it's something to carry with us, something God calls us to live in and work out from. And for those of you who are a little bit elderly, maybe you've been a part of the charismatic revival, maybe you've been at the beginning of the faith movement and saw how it transformed and changed our lives. You came here early, went to Bible school maybe. But that doesn't mean that's where it ends. There are new waves, new blessings from the heaven. And I've been sitting and thinking about this conference and when Tim Ross preached so strongly both in the evening and morning, I felt it was like the whole history and presence, a present of our church and movement sort of flowed together. And I heard there is more of faith, more of the Holy Spirit, more to receive. And so, dear friends, those of us who are a little bit older, let us not stagnate. The Holy Spirit is kicking us in a friendly way in the back, saying, there is more. I want to do more here in Sweden, in your cities and villages. I want to do more in your churches and in Europe and in the whole world. Amen. So, so it is so wonderful that that there is no option of stagnating, of remaining still. There is always more in a wonderful way from heaven. And the Lord challenges us throughout our lives. The Christian life, the Christian walk is a constant challenge to not stop. Then of course life, lives can look different and there are different seasons, intensive seasons and ones with more rest. But even in those seasons that are calm and we don't really have the strength to work as hard as we did when we were younger, that does not mean stagnating. It means a new season where the Holy Spirit flows in a different way. And but when the challenges also come, the Lord and Heaven challenges us to constantly walk on this path of faith, this path of prayer, of worship. And when I say worship, aren't we happy about the worship this conference? I am so thankful for our worship team and I want to say a few words to all our volunteers to thank you, all the people who have served in any way, in any area, if you've been up on the stage or out there in the food tents or you've been a host, a worshipper, a technician, whatever area. We want to thank you all so very much. They worked 24-7, basically. So thank you so much.
It would be impossible to do this without all of you. And I feel such pride as a pastor to have so many wonderful colleagues here working and covering every area of this conference, putting their lives, making them available to the church so that we can all enjoy the presence of God and all that He does during our services. My sermon this morning is called Packed and Ready. I will pack this church, not pack it down in an old suitcase. We do have an old suitcase though that will go up on the stage. But I want to illustrate what is it that you and I take with us home from this conference? What does the Lord want us to continue living in? What has been a signal? What has been a task given to us since a long time ago, but that God gives new life to these days? When the Lord speaks, we need to handle that in a certain way. First of all, we need a heart that receives. We need a heart that prays and a faith that acts out what God has spoken to us. So what I said before was, let this conference not only be like a short-term height in your life, but stay on that height. Think about what has God said during these days. So what do we have here in the suitcase? This is like the Lachulaiban box. If you're like 50 plus Swedes, you know what I'm talking about. So what do we have here? Pellegrino. Let's put that there. A screwdriver. Oh, everyone needs a screwdriver. I bought a screwdriver to all my children. They're completely uninterested in screwdrivers. But you cannot live without a screwdriver. You just need to have one. I have like seven, eight, maybe ten of these at home. Joachim, you need a screwdriver. Rune, this is not for your biceps. It's a heart. So, what has the Lord done? What has He spoken to us? What should we carry with us from this conference? My first point is life with the Holy Spirit. And this bottle of bubble water called will rep represent that. It's called Pellegrino. It means pilgrim, which is the walk with God. We walk with the Holy Spirit. Life, not just in the Holy Spirit, but with the Holy Spirit. I think Pastor Joachim's sermon last night and the beginning with Ben Fitzgerald were such outpourings of the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Joachim's teaching about hearing the Spirit talk and living with the Holy Spirit. Not just being touched by the Spirit, having some goosebumps, but truly living together with the Holy Spirit. And those of us, again, who are a little bit older, there is more of the Holy Spirit all the time. I know that these, there are so little uh, of the of the 
substance here. So, not sure, nothing happened. Okay. I wanted it to flow over, but there is not very much of this in Pellegrino. To drink of the Holy Spirit, to live with the Holy Spirit. There is this sort of cliche word, drink deep from the Spirit. I believe that we as Christians, from a young age to our last breath, we need to live with the Holy Spirit. Our churches need that. There is a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is more to receive from the Holy Spirit. And not just in spectacular miracles. Of course, we need to believe in those too. But the deep life with the Holy Spirit, where He every day speaks to you, where He every day leads you, both in the great life decisions, but also in the small, spontaneous decisions. Just like Pastor Joachim said yesterday, that little text message you send to someone that you think is a spontaneous idea, but is a task by the Holy Spirit. Let us expect to be led by the Holy Spirit. Let us expect that the Holy Spirit is with us in a wonderful way, through our walk, through our pilgrim walk through life. The Spirit wants to be with you. And you who are a pastor, a church builder, a leader, let us believe that there is a new time of the Holy Spirit for our churches. Let us go to this word that I have repeated over and over again this week. I think it's so beautiful. We'll read it once again. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Dear pastor and church leader, take this with you. Let this word land in your hearts and all the rest of you, of course, as well. Pray over this word. Take this with you. And let us believe that this will come true in our lives and in our churches. If you've been a part of the charismatic revival and the faith movement and all the revivals that may have been in these last decades, God has touched cities and churches. We cannot master the Holy Spirit. He does not come at our command, but He responds to, pe to hearts that are obedient and listening, hearts that hunger and thirst. Because Scripture says, Jesus said Himself in the Sermon on the Mount, those who hunger and thirst, they will be fed. So let us hunger and thirst for this. Hosea 6 and 3. This word came to me before the conference. I shared this with the leadership team here. Let us know the Lord. Let us strive to know Him. He will appear as surely as the dawn and come to us like a rain, like a spring rain that waters the earth. The Holy Spirit works in and through Ben Fitzgerald in a very special way. There is no stress, nothing forced about it. It's all about waiting for the Holy Spirit, letting Him come as He wants. We also had a word to us from a dear pastor that said, make sure you prepare the way for the Holy Spirit and you give space for the gifts of the Spirit. And there we need to say yes and amen so that we do not stand in the way of the Holy Spirit, but we allow the Spirit to work in the way that He wants to, to work 
in our churches just like he wants to in the church and through the church let him work to give new life to missions and evangelism because the Holy Spirit is not just this nice feeling of goosebumps as he said but he is a spirit of sending out out into the city he sends you out into the world to touch the world and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love he fills you with love in a time of so much hate so much splintering there is so much polemic things put against each other in a way that splinters the body of Christ we need to receive the Holy Spirit the spirit of love the spirit of unity that makes us stand together no matter if we think the same or have different opinions the Holy Spirit melds our hearts together to stand together in the service of Jesus to love this world that is life with the Holy Spirit let us live with the Holy Spirit let us believe that he will use us in a beautiful way when we walk out from this conference second things to take with us you might understand what this stands for keep building continue to build let us keep building let us keep working let us continue to let the Lord work through us to build the kingdom of God and how do we build what do we build what are the details of this plan that's why we need the living water the Holy Spirit to lead us in this building process otherwise it might become it could lead to anything good or bad I'm in the middle of a building project myself at home it started small it became very big because my wife asked me one time do you have any any plan for this project I said no I build everything from the heart sometimes it doesn't go so well sometimes it gets expensive because without a plan it might not be very good I am often very spontaneous when my wife wakes up she might do so from hearing a hammer and I've like broken up the floor or a wall and she asks why, why, why are you doing this do you have a plan I said no but it will be great in the end so pray for Sanna she needs all the prayers she can get uh, because she lives under the same roof as I do when we build God's kingdom we have a building master to follow he has one we have one that has a plan and leads us in the building process so how do we build what do we build we don't decide but we have a master that we follow we have the Holy Spirit that leads us and he says go to that city he says build on that project he calls us to the poor he calls us to the nations he calls us to knock on doors that only he can open he calls us to close doors that only he can close he calls us into those things that he wants us to go to and to those nations that he wants us to enter so let us be led by the Holy Spirit let us keep our tools ready our batteries charged so that we can be ready and walk in the way the Lord calls us to do again when these prophetic callings come 
Oh, I just love the screwdriver. Come on. It's this great sound. I love screwdrivers. When prophetic callings come, as it did during the evening with Tim Ross, Friday evening, our hearts then need to be in place, need to be open to these words. There are milestones, and I think that for our church, this is also our normal Sunday service, so there are many of our Sunday uh, church members here. And those of you in the church, Word of Life movement and family, it was a prophetic word to our movement last Friday to keep building, an encouragement to keep building this building that we have worked on for 40 years at this point. There are new rooms to build, new outdoor rooms and, and balconies and a new foundation to prepare and build more on. There are new fields to enter into. So let us not lose hope now. It's been 40 years. It's been so long. It seemed great the first 20-25 years, but now I don't know. But now he says keep building. God says so charge your screwdriver because let's screw. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read a word on that as well. Not about screwdrivers. I haven't found that, unfortunately. Something's wrong. There are no screwdrivers in the Bible. Jeremiah 1, the calling of the prophets. Verse 11 to 12. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. We need to have our eyes touched by God, to see what He wants us to see. So dear pastors and, and church leaders, this is a work by the Holy Spirit to let God work in us so that we see what He wants us to see, to see the holy heavenly blueprints, the plan He wants us to build from. And it says so beautifully, God watches over His Word that it is fulfilled. And together with Him, we can work and see the Word fulfilled. We cannot do that in our own power. We cannot work in our own strength. But be watchful. Listen to the Word. What has God spoken to us? Not more, not less. We need to be careful here. Dear pastors and leaders and all the rest of you, we should not be afraid or nervous. We're uncertain, but careful. Careful. In what direction are we turning here? How should our missions ministry look like? How do we evangelize this city? How do we build Word of Life, this movement, in the future? What will it look like? What a fantastic task that we have. What a fun task to build this. Knowing that 
God is with us, the Spirit fills us, and the Spirit gives us new tasks. The Holy Spirit comes with a new wind, and when that happens, we need to be prepared to raise the sails. And that's not only about us as pastors, it's our common calling as all believers to build the kingdom, to raise the sails together, to sail out on the open seas. Word of Life, there is an image of Word of Life. We're not called to be uh, sailors that have like a huge sailing boat and the boat is always by the harbor. They don't actually sail out on the seas, they just want to look good. We're not like that, we're built for the open seas, even stormy seas. We are made and we thrive when the wind is hard, when the wind is in the wrong direction, when it's a little bit uncomfortable, Other, otherwise we become restless and we could easily start to fight among ourselves a little bit. So we need to, need to be busy with the right things to raise the sails, tighten them and sail out on the open seas everywhere we God calls us. Amen. Number three has to do with worship and this tambourine here represents that. Those of you who know me know that I am totally tone deaf. I am so happy that people can sing and play guitar, but we can all worship because that does not have anything to do with being a musician or a singer. The calling to worship is so much deeper. And here, I think there are new levels, new heights. I am so happy that our worship team presses up on those heights, helps us to find them in worship. Let us not be slow in worship. Those of you who know me know that I say this often, is that it's easy to start to taste the worship a little bit and think, oh, I love that song, but not that one very much. And you're kind of bitter after service because you did not sing the songs that you like. But they shouldn't be ones that you like or not. They should enter into your heart, come from your heart. So it's my decision that no matter what songs are sung, if I like them particularly well or not, I will sing and worship God, because that is my calling, not to taste whether the guitarist is, 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 is good or not. It's kind of useless for me because I don't hear the difference, to be honest. So if you're a musician here in this church, feel blessed, because I will never even know if you play falsely or not. But it's about the heart, that's the point. The Lord calls us into worship and praise. And that is something to take with you from this conference. Whether you are a part of a church that has this great setup with many instruments and worshippers and volume, or a small little church that doesn't have that, take with you that the main thing is the heart of worship. God calls us onto new heights in worship. And I recognize that this conference, that calling to worship in the correct way, to live in worship. And I want to give you a verse on this 
topic as well, Psalm 95. Psalm 95. And the first few verses. I could have picked basically any verse in the Psalms. But this one says, Come, let us sing a sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. I believe that fellowship and prayer, the calling to live in spirit-filled, flowing prayer that we have experienced this conference. In these times that we live in, many things are, cha are shaking. Europe is being shaken. Our hearts can be shaken. Fl economic fears can come into our lives. So much is happening in our world. How we act and react is determined by how well our hearts are. When we enter into prayer, we can sometimes react very strongly and share a whole bunch of opinions and thoughts. But before we react, let us enter into our prayer chamber. Direct our hearts in the right direction. Let us be quiet before the Lord. Let our hearts bow before God in humility. Prayer massages your heart. Praise and worship massages your heart so that your heart is always soft and obedient. Amen. And my next point, I will take this quickly, is faith and confidence instead of fear and dread. And this stone, this rock here, symbolizes a cliff, a rock, like in Matthew 16, where God says, but on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Matthew 16. In all that happens in the world, with all that happens around us, we can act in different ways. We can have a stone in our hand, and we can throw this stone at each other. We can stone each other with all our thoughts and opinions, or we can let this stone become a rock that we stand on. So let us stop throwing stones at each other, and let us instead stand on the rock. Let us stand on the rock that is Christ, because there and only there can we act in faith. There and only there we will overcome. If you have a stone in your hand with which you want to knock your brother or sister out, then we can never overcome in a Christian way. If you knock that person out, you will walk away as a loser. Therefore, let us not throw rocks, stones at each other. Let us meet each other. In our, in our different opinions and thoughts, whether political or theological, all manner of things, where we do not agree with each other, but I don't need to stone you because you think differently, but we can stand together holding each other's hands and pray together no matter what we think. And, uh, amen. Only that way can we walk forward in faith. 
I often say that you cannot pray for more faith if you don't at the same time pray for more love because faith and love are siblings they belong together we cannot act in faith without acting in love faith and hate don't go together it doesn't work so let us make up with hate in our hearts because if you do carry hate bitterness in your hearts it will be difficult maybe impossible to believe but if we want to believe the impossible we set our feet on the rock Christ and he felt our hearts not just my hearts but faith for the impossible we can only accomplish together if we stand together walk together as Christian brothers and sisters churches around the world then we can shake the gates of hell Amen the worship team can come up my last point is the heart when Ben Fitzgerald preached on Wednesday morning about the need of the lost compassion for the lost it was like a blow to my heart because I think we all sit in the same boat it is so easy to be busy with all the things that has to do with church to be busy as a pastor all these board meetings all the administrative tasks and conversations taking care of people and all these things are good nothing wrong with them but you become professional in your faith and we who work in the church especially for us maybe but for all of us too it's a challenge but we forget there's a world out there a world we are called to so it was like the Holy Spirit kicked me in the back excuse the language and I think that kick was aimed for you too I think it was a, a calling God points out to us that the harvest is ready there is a harvest we need to go to there are hearts need to be moved we need to let the Holy Spirit touch our hearts when we step into the church into worship into fellowship with the body of Christ when we pray that all contributes to the Holy Spirit working in our hearts to increase the compassion for the lost and I want to finish by reading from Matthew 9 verse 35 to 38 and let us receive these verses let them work in our hearts Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field let us pray together Lord we thank you for this conference we may all have experienced it differently heard different things I pray Holy Spirit that you will reveal things 
to me that I have not heard, but others may have heard. Let us all stand up together. Lord, I think in one way this conference is over now or very soon, but we want to carry with us the prophetic words spoken, not leave them here at the stage, not leave them at the preachers who spoke them. We want to carry these words in our hearts. So we praise you. We thank you for your ministry. Let us pray in the Holy Spirit. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for your calling, Lord. Thank you for your words. We praise you. We worship you. You have said, help us, our hearts, to receive space for these words, to grow and believe that there are new challenges coming, a new wave, a new calling, new heights, new nations, new tasks. We thank you and we that you guide us in the building process, how we build, what we build. We thank you and we praise you that we can walk and be led by you, that we can be sent out from this conference filled by your words, filled with your power. And we pray, as the prophet did, that you touch our eyes to see what you want us to see. Touch our ears so that we hear what you want us to hear. Help us to act in the way that you want us to. We praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us do something very fun again now at the end of this service and this conference. We will send out a young missionary, young girl, who has decided to step out into the life of a missionary that is Tia Hamre. Where are you? Come up here, Tia. Can I ask Ville Rune Christian Carl Gustav to come here? Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. This is a holy moment and a beautiful end to tie up all the threads of what we have heard this week, to rejoice with a young girl who takes her calling seriously, to travel to the other side of the world to minister to people. Tia, can you tell us what you will do? Yes, I will go to India and work with our Bible schools there. I will make sure there are teachers there. There are several different Bible schools in different areas there. And I will be the administrator and also teach some. Wonderful. Let us give Tia a hand of applause. I am so moved in my heart. And I think this is such a great symbol. Next conference, I have the word of missions explosion and you are setting the, the theme, the tone for next Europe conference. So do not miss the next conference because we will send you out to all kinds of places. This is so beautiful Tia, the way that you have said yes to the calling. We have followed you for a time in this church. Your longing and hunger for the Lord your willingness to serve Him. So we will lay our hands on you now and send you out. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray for Tia right now. Lord, we thank you that Tia has heard the calling, said yes to going. We give her now to you, to this task. Thank you that we can send her out in the power of the Spirit from this church. We thank you for your grace that will be over her. 
thank you that she will work not in her own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, in acts prepared for her. So we submit her to you. We thank you for your guidance in her life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we can lift up Tia before you. She is a small person, a human being, with a calling to a great country. You are the, the Lord of the harvest. And work, lead her and guide her. Protect her from sickness. Hold your hand over her. Keep her safe and give her strength to walk in the power of the spirits. When she teaches, let her feel your anointing, your strength. When she coordinates and administrates, let her feel your anointing in her work. We pray that you enable her and bless her. Lord, the harvest is big, but the workers are few. We pray, Lord, that you will bless these Bible schools in India. They are there to raise up workers of the harvest. We pray, Lord, for the work of this beautiful harvest in these Bible schools. Thank you for blessing over it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is the best friend of the missionary. The word comes to me from Acts 16. Paul, on his second missionary trip, is trying to go south and east in Turkey, but the Holy Spirit guides him differently. And they stop and they get a vision and the team understands they are called to Europe. I pray, Lord, that you will give Thea the supernatural ability to listen to the Holy Spirit, to feel how the Spirit guides her in her missionary work. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wonderful. Let us give the Lord a hand of applause. I'm finished. I'll let you finish it. Let us lift our hands and our hearts to God. Lord, we thank you. I stand in admiration for what you have done this week. I thank you that it is not an ending, but a beginning. I thank you that the good work you have started, you will finish until the day of the Lord Jesus. I thank you and bless all the people that have come here and will now go home to their own cities and countries. Let the words they have heard sink into their hearts and work in, in their hearts when they come home. Thank you so much for this conference. Lift your hearts and receive the blessing. The Lord keep you and bless you. The Lord let His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you His peace and all that you need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the people said, and we give the Lord of this conference one last cheer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome back to Europe Conference 2023 or earlier if you wish. God bless you. All right, and with that, we say thank you so very much from this studio. What more could you wish? 
Tia, I'm sure you're very moved. Oh, for sure I am. It was a special moment. I feel moved by this whole conference. So thankful for what God has done and what we have heard, all the teaching. There's been such width to our meetings with God and so many challenges to take with us. So I felt so very thankful. We will get Jan and you will come up here in the studio very, very soon. But that was a wonderful way that Janne concluded this conference. And I feel like someone needed to take this screwdriver away from him. Someone commented about this in the chat. We need to really take care of these words that we have heard. And Jan illustrated that very well. And all these words about living with the Spirit, having a deeper life with the Spirit, and of course to keep building. Our story, our history is not only nostalgic. We have seen this movement grow in so many different countries. So this is not only a witness to the glory of the past, but a wind helping us to go into the future. Help us to stay firm in the calling, in the hope, to keep building and trust that God will make this into a blessing. We had this word of previous conference, you have done good, but you can do better. This is in the same vein. We hear that God is here and now calling us, still, as He has always done. And this word about building is not, also, not only about our church, but it's about our lives. You can build it in your character. You can reach people around you. I want to encourage you, take this with you, both Ben Fitzgerald and Joachim Lundqvist talked about the Holy Spirit and gave us opportunities to listen to the Holy Spirit. Is there anyone the Holy Spirit points out to you, some person you should maybe contact, pray for, talk to? Ben Fitzgerald talked about The words the Spirit says, don't let them pass you by, but listen to them and act on them. Now Jan and Joachim are coming into the studio, and they will share a little bit about this conference. Welcome. Thank you for a wonderful sermon. Someone said in the chat, let him always have a screwdriver in, in his hands when he preaches. We're all agreed that we've had a wonderful week. God's gifts has been on us. So if the two of you could give one example each of what has touched you this conference. For me, it's the word keep building. That came to me so strongly. Also the whole conference and over our movements. That was a word to our movement, not just the word of life in Uppsala, but as a movement. And that evening was like a milestone for our church. I think we can see in 40 years that Europe Conference 2022 was a milestone, an important marker in our history. We had this word previously, you can do good, but we can do more. This was like a new word in that same vein. I stand in admiration for what God can do with new speakers, 
Jim Ross has never been here before, but now he came here as the perfect missing piece of the puzzle, speaking right into our ministry. And Brandy Carano, with all her enthusiasm, and other speakers, there have been so many words, so many elements. And it's been very special for us because we stand in a new in new functions here for the first time in many years. And we've been able to see how we complement each other in these new roles, but building the same things. Your life is very dif different. You live in Louisiana, you and your family, and are part of Bethany Church with Larry Stockstill, and you travel a lot too in many conferences and churches. How has this year been? And how is it to come back home from that? We said this on the way up the stairs here. But only now do we see the strength of this new organization of the church. We are changing positions and Janne has entered with full authority and a fatherhood of this church and I can run with God's calling on my life right now but in the same vision it's the same word of life and I looked at the, at the calendar now the coming six months I will preach and represent word of life in the largest church in Mexico in Peru in Argentina in Brazil and also Yonggi-chu's uh, church in South Korea and also a large church in, in Indonesia I am not that great of a preacher that this is reasonable but God is opening this new door that we can run into when God is doing this new work while our home church is strong and stable here in Uppsala so I am full of expectations what may come from this I ask Yes, that is truly wonderful to hear how the fall looks like for you, Joachim. Now, Janne, what are your thoughts after this conference for the fall? What is our vision for the fall? It is these words that are the, the strength carrying us this fall. And we need to carry them with us in our hearts and that can express itself in many different ways myself and the leadership we need to pray through all these words and ask God in what way is this expressed in what way does this form us and shape us and that is exciting I think because then it will become what the Holy Spirit wants I don't have any really clear thought out ideas yet but I am safe and secure in the fact that God will lead us because we know the words have been spoken and we will let them grow and work in our hearts and that will send us out on the open seas and new adventures and so I am so very expectant and happy to build together with all of you because this is no one-man show it is a team it's teamwork we discover it together and we build it together. I would like to add there that there is such a wonderful church standing behind us. One thing that moved me this morning was looking up on the stage, young girl called Cornelia. I know she has been, been one of the people responsible for the whole children's ministry this conference worked from Monday to Sunday yet she stands here on Sunday morning on the worship team that shows such devotion it's not the devotion of a few those of us who pre preach on the stage but it is a great conference of love carried by a church 
that has heard the calling from God. Yes, that is very true. I talked for a long time with one of our church members who has barely been to any meeting this conference, but just working morning to evening with the practical behind the stage things and helping to make sure that we can all have this conference, make it possible. Of course, there's also the war in Ukraine that has characterized this conference a bit. We have very dear friends in Ukraine and in Russia that are part of our family and it is a very painful situation. And it's been a part of this conference, not in the forefront, but it is important still. And there is a terrible pain for what our Ukrainian and Russian friends are going through. So this will be characteristic of, our, of the fall in our church. We will have more trips to Ukraine. They say we cannot have big public meetings because that will draw missiles. So how can we go with a large group of people? How is it possible that we can travel there? How can, we, how can this be true in Europe? And so we will travel from church to church. We have put so much effort into humanitarian aid, like food and clothing. But we need also to, uh, to focus on the spiritual needs of the people. Also during the worship service yesterday, one of those who were with us was a worship leader from Ukraine. It's a big family that we have, and we can stand together in this, these tough times. I thought that was very wonderful about the family, that we can also ordain a new pastor today, Johannes Sundin in Arnsjelsvik. Do you have any thoughts about that, Janne? Well, both the sending out of you and the pastor's ordination is a beautiful package of this church, of this conference. To ordain a pastor and send out a missionary, both of those things summarizes the conference in a beautiful way. There is so much history, and just like I said, I said on the sermon, this conference summarizes our history in a way, but also adds a new faith for the future. And these things, the ordination and sending out, are characteristic of this process. And it is so beautiful We, we can see that the revivals and movements of the past, many of them are one generation only. And we don't want that to happen to us. So we always need to work on equipping the next generation, giving it mandates to run with authority. Last night I felt a great need from the Spirit to bring the young people to the front, not just on their own youth meeting, but in our big evening service, to mark to the church the calling over the next generation, our calling to equip them and be mothers and fathers to them. And that was so beautifully expressed through both the ordination and the sending out of a missionary today. And about this situation with Russia and Ukraine, I want to encourage myself and all of us to continue walk the path of prayer. We need to continue praying to stand against that darkness that is over Ukraine and over Russia. 
In this time in Europe, there is so much uncertainty. None of us knows what will happen. And so we need to walk in faith, be led by the Holy Spirit. That is the only solution. That is the only way for us to truly walk with God and not make wrongful statements. And there I think we will end this week and the Sunday service. I would like to share first just that my, my mind was filled with the word of knowledge right now. I see a woman at home who has difficulty walking. You're sitting on a sofa and you need crutches or, or something to help you move around. And I saw you in the spirit in your sofa. And I would like to pray that the God will come over you and touch your body. And then these two will also pray what is in their hearts. So Father, I pray specifically for this woman that you showed me. I pray you touch her now in the name of Jesus. I pray for a healing into that body. I pray in the Holy Spirit that you touch her. Let your oil pour down over her body who ha that has had such difficulties moving. Heal this sister, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Let her take up her phone to tell of what has happened today. Come over her Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for Europe in this special time. We thank you for what you have done in this Europe conference. We thank you for the words that have been spoken to us and apply for our whole movement and for us stepping out into Europe to build your kingdom in Europe in these strange times, these shaking, difficult times. You call us, Lord, as individual believers and as a movement. I praise you and thank you for wind in the sails. In the middle of all the chaos, your kingdom can break through. Your light can break through. So we pray for your mercy, Lord. Help us to preach in Ukraine to build and encourage and strengthen both on the Ukrainian front and the Russian front. And in other European cities and countries, we praise you that your kingdom will break through in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for all that you have spoken and done this conference. And I pray for all the people watching this conference from home. Help them to break down the message about living with and in the Holy Spirit. I pray that everyone listening will receive a new life in the Holy Spirit, to grow in that, in the great and in the small. I thank you for the word, keep building, that can be applied in the small, that we do in our local church, but also can be applied in our personal lives. So both big and small. We can build our marriages, our families, our relationships. We can build our, your kingdom in our own homes and in the church. We thank you for the word, words you've spoken to us, both the macro version and the micro version. Help them to move us and make us more like Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for all the people watching us within Sweden and from outside Sweden. No matter how close we are physically, we're all one mind and one spirit. Help us to stand together Bless and keep them. Give them all that they need. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, thank you very much, Jana and Joachim, for being with us a few minutes here. We are so happy that you, who are watching this, 
are listening, please keep coming to our Sunday services or joining our YouTube live services. It's been such a great joy for us to be a host for you that we can follow this conference together is so great. And if you have any testimony from this service, then please write to us. It is so wonderful to hear what God has done during the conferences. And if you need someone to pray for you, then also write to us. And we will keep praying even after the conference.